vaccine is out. Now, the CDC has some independent advisors who have decided who get the vaccine first. They have decided that the nurses, the doctors, and the healthcare workers will be first. Some may say, well, what about the people with pre-existing conditions? What about the elderly? What, what about the guy folding a sweater at, at Gap? All these things are going on, but we have to realize that our healthcare workers have to be well so they can help us get well. The same goes for your personal life. You have to make sure you take care of yourself first so you are better to take care of others later. The Bible says in Psalms 23 and 5 that my cup runneth over. What's in my cup is for me. What flows over my cup is for you. That's not being selfish. That's being self-full. You see, you cannot keep pouring from an empty cup. As soon, you won't have anything left. You have to make sure your cup is filled. If your cup is not filled, you have to say no. And when you say no, you grow. Some may say, well, Pastor, I, I feel guilty and, and at, at times and that I can't help others. Well, say no today, and you'll feel better Tuesday. Here's the point. You have to make sure you look out for me before we. So today I want to talk about remember me before we. Well, Pastor, I am just a good person, and I just want to help. You see, in today's society, people don't cherish good people. They use them. And you have to make sure that your cup is filled before you can fill someone else's cup. We're on a journey today to this new year, 2020 and, and 21, and people are looking for big things. And I can remember last year, my sermon was in 2020. This is the year of 2020 vision. I can see clearly the blessings are coming. I can see it. But nobody's seen what 2020 brought on the scene. Only God knows. And you have to make sure that your cup is filled and that you're doing the will of God. And I have no better example than to use Paul. In Philippians 3, 12 and 14, Paul is pressing toward the prize that God has for him. And he's making no excuses. If you would, ride with me to Philippians 3 and 12. If you want a better year for your life, you must first admit some things to yourself. There's no better example than Paul. You have to be honest with yourself and figure out where you are today. If you ever go to any AA meeting, the first step of recovery that you first got to admit, and Paul said, I'm not all the way there right now. Paul has had some victories in his life, but he also been through a shipwreck. He's been through some things, and this is what he's doing. He's evaluating his life. This is what he says. Not that I have already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. You have to be honest with yourself. And he's admitting, I'm not all the way there. I have not reached the standards that God has for me. Have you reached the standards that God has for your life? You see, Paul saw this life as a process. And every now and then, we have to get somewhere and sit down and evaluate our life before we move forward. This COVID did it for a lot of us. Look, 2020 threw a monkey wrench in a lot of our lives. We've had job shortages, food shortages, even toilet paper shortages. Why do we have a shortage in toilet paper? But it's so many shortages that we have that affected our life. And it gave us time to get somewhere and, and in a quiet place and look around at our lives. There are some relationships we know now that are just not good for us. We had time to sit down, think, and reflect in your career. There are some jobs that are not coming back after the pandemic. 
If you're in school, it may, you may have to redirect where you're looking, what you're going to major in. But this is a great time for us to sit down and be honest with ourselves. You can lie to anybody else, but the worst thing you can do is lie to yourself. And Paul is a prime example of one who, who, who gets to himself and say, I'm not already all, all there. And then he also says right here, Paul said, I have not already arrived at my goal. Have you reached your financial goals for this year? If you look at your health, have you reached your health goals this year? Emotionally, have you reached the goals this year? This is a time to reflect. And see, by admitting that he had not already arrived, this stopped him from being complacent, and it also stopped him from being prideful. This admission that Paul and this honesty that he had is something that we all can use in our lives. Most studies say that we only use 10% um, or 1% of our brain. There's so much more that Christ has for our lives. Paul was so eager to do the will of God and Paul had that on his mind. He had that single-mindedness. Like an athlete, he was focused on what he had to do. And many times, if you look at your life, you got so many things that you have to do. And you can't lose focus on what everybody else is doing. You know, one thing, I don't understand uh, messy people and how folks can be in everybody else's business. I really don't get that. But let me tell you, help, let me help someone. About five years ago, I was at work and I talked to, I talked to my mentor. There was a, a, a story floating around that a hater had said some things about me. And I saw Dr. Williams in the hallway. And I said, Dr. Williams, that ain't. He said, hold up, young buck. He said, I know it ain't true. Let me stop you right there. He said, you tell them to get some business so they can get out your business. That, that's going to help somebody right there. In 2021, there's somebody always in your business. You tell them to get some business so they can get out your business because you have too much to do in order to remember me before we. You must first admit where you are and you must first aspire for something better. And Paul was single-minded and he was focused on something better. And Paul is saying that right there. He said, look, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Paul was going to press on for God's high calling for his life. And you and I must do the same. That should be every believer desire is to press forward for the high calling that God has for our life. But we have to get focused like Paul. This, this is what he said, Emily. He said, but this one thing I do know. This one thing. You see, in my life, when I want to get some things out of order and disarray, when I try to do multiple things in my life, that's my life gets messed up. But when I focus on that one thing, that's when my life get good. So you should focus on one thing and then your life will get gooder and you'll be your goodest. Now that's good English right there. That's Hattiesburg High 1991. But we have to focus on that one thing. Are you focused on that one thing or are you dibbling and dabbling everywhere else? I saw an article a few days ago about Tesla. The, the, the car company, electric car company, they are Fortune 500 right now. They did something different than the other electric car companies. This is what they did. They built their infrastructure. They focused on one thing. They built charging stations throughout the big cities, and now they're throughout the country. And see, the other companies, they just had a little charging station at home. You see, now Tesla is the number one electric car company because they focused on one single thing, they built the infrastructure. And that's why they're successful. If you want your life to get better, I promise you in areas of your life, if you focus on one thing and get better and get gooder, and you'll be your goodest. That's some, that's some more good English right there. But we, we, we got to do our best and focus on that one thing. Now, he said I'm, that, that one thing I do know, but he also said this right here. I'm going to forget what's up in the past so I can press forward towards my future. Paul said, I'm forgetting what is behind me, and I'm straining towards what is ahead. Beloved, I want to encourage you today to stop looking 
at your past failures in a disparaging way. You can't run the race that God has for you if you keep looking behind. It will make you lose energy, and Christ has too much ahead of you. You, you know what, what was never mentioned in the Bible? A rearview mirror. And that's why and when you look into your windshield, that the windshield is so much bigger than the rearview mirror. It's because what's ahead of you is much more important than what's behind you. And you have to stay focused on what God has for you ahead of you. Your future is much brighter than your past. If you keep looking behind, you will end up like Lot's wife. In Genesis, when God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he told Lot and his wife to not look back. And Lot's wife looked back and she was destroyed. You see, the, everything that God has for you is ahead of you and not behind you. You will lose your future looking back. And you will never step into your purpose until you step out of your past. What God has for you is in front of you. In order to remember me before we, you must admit where you are. You must aspire to do better. And you must apply this to your life. People always say that knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. It's the application of knowledge that is power. And Paul is saying, hey, I'm pressing on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. And that should be each and every one of our goals in life is to get that prize. Because back in the days in, in Greek and in Athens, back in the day when, when a runner would win a, win a race, he would be summoned down to the stadium to receive his prize. And he would receive some, some wreath of, of leaves. Today they get gold medals. But you want that prize. And that prize is a crown of righteousness. When God called you home, did you run the race in which Christ had for you? Would you be ready for that prize? Now, life gets tough sometimes, but we got to keep pressing towards the prize. Earlier this year, my son got cut by the Miami Dolphins, and he had some trial with some other NFL teams, and he kept receiving the word no. But we kept going to the field at Tim's Elementary where people were walking around the track, and we kept going out there working on defensive back drills and other drills. But over the last month, it has been cold out there. And many days, we were the only one out there. Many times in life when you're doing the will of God, it may seem like you're doing it in vain. And then plus, it's getting to the end of the season. Well, last week, the, the Arizona Cardinals called my son in for a workout. It was him and some other guys. And at the workout, the coach came at the very end, and he commended him and said, Son, you did a great job. You are still in shape. You are football ready. They signed him to the Arizona Cardinals. You see, when the NFL called, you don't have time to get ready. You have to be ready. There were several guys there that were not in shape. I want to say to you, beloved, when God called you, are you ready? Because when Gabriel sounds that horn, you don't have time to get ready. You have to be ready. In your life today, are you running the race that God has for you? If you run that race, you will receive the prize that God has for you. In order to remember me before we, we must first admit where we are. We must also aspire for more, and we must also apply this to our lives. Look, Paul has given us the principles for life, and we must all press towards the mark that God has for us. We must press towards that high calling 
that God has for us. I want to tell you this right here. 2020 threw a lot of people off, but we now have time to evaluate ourselves and see what we can do for the future. I am wishing each and every person a great 2021. God has something great in store for you. And like the example of the rear view mirror, the windshield is bigger because what's ahead of you is much greater than what's behind. Be blessed and hope to see you next week. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed the message today. It is now time for tithes and offering. There are three ways to give. You can use our cash app at the bottom of the screen. You can also text and it's at the bottom of the screen. Or if you would like, we have a drop box here at the church where you can drop off your giving. Now, if something was said today that moved you and you want to give your life to Christ, we would like for you to call us at 601-408-7156. We want to talk to you about your decision today.